Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and thanks for dropping in for another Ham Shack Chat. Now this video is going to be a little bit different as I'm trying a bit of an experiment. In the past, when I talked about a new mode, I found that much of the video was repetitive. I've also got a lot more experience and have done more research into how to best get in to digital modes. This video will only cover what's needed to set up your FT991A right here for virtually all digital modes. And I'll, I'll mention when something needs to go another way. Then when I, for example, talk about FT8, WinLink, JS8 Call, VARAC, and the HRD modes, just to name a few, I will just have to refer back to this video for the initial setup of your rig. Now there's benefits all around. It gives the added benefit to both myself and you of making all of these videos shorter. It is shorter. And easier to digest in a single sitting. And I don't know about you, but when I'm looking for a video to watch, I prefer the shorter ones, say, you know, eight to 12 minutes. Now that seems to be a sweet spot, but a lot of my videos were ending up, you know, 20, 25 minutes long, and this was a big chunk of it. So if I can just get rid of the repetitiveness. Bonus. Now, I would appreciate your comments and suggestions, especially about this experiment, and will do my best to respond to everything in the comments. Comments. Section below, even if it is just to give that thumbs up. We'll start by taking a look at the menu settings I've identified and used for my own digital communications on the FT991A. We have 14 different menu settings that we need to set. So we'll go into our menu and the first one, you don't need to set this, you just need to verify that 002 AGC mid delay is at 700 milliseconds. Next, we're gonna go up to item number 31 and your cat rate, which is how fast your rig is talking over the USB cable to the computer and vice versa. I have mine set at 9600. You can set it at any value that's available there. Just jot down a note of what you actually have or remember it. Next is our 032 cat tote, which is timeout timer. It default is 10 milliseconds, which is too fast. So bump that up to 100 milliseconds. Item 33, CAT RTS should be disabled. We're moving on up. We're moving on up. Now we're going up to item 60. And item 60 is our PC keying. You want that turned off. Item 62, you want your data mode set to others. And you want to set your other display to 1500 with 065 other shift set to 1500. Item 066 is your data low cut frequency. You want to set that to 100 with a 067 data low cut slope of 18 dB per octave. Set your high end 068 data high cut to 3000 Hertz with the same slope on 069. Item 070, your data in select, you want to be to the rear. And you want your data PTT select on item 071 to be DACI. And that completes all the menus that you have to set. For quick reference, you can find these menu settings listed in the video description below. If you're enjoying this video so far and feel like maybe it's worthwhile, give me a like. Fabulous. The first thing that you're going to want to do, especially if you're doing the WSJTX modes, is to make sure that your time is all synchronized. Come down here, float your cursor over the clock over here, and right click, then go to Adjust Date and Time. On your initial setting, come down here to Additional Clocks, select Internet Time, then change settings. You've got two selections here. You got timenist.gov and timewindows.com. 
the timewindows.com seems to be more readily available, although NIST is good as well. There's not too much difference. <laughs> so click update now, and you're going to see Windows is synchronizing your time with windows.com. If an error pops up, just repeat. And this time it's successfully synchronized. Now once you've done that one time, we can get all the way out of here. And when you first pop this up, you'll see this, Sync Now. This one will just automatically go through that process and you'll get a little check mark and you're synced. I'm going to open my device manager and since I've had it open before, I can click right there and my device manager will you want pull. to open up your ports common LPT and you'll see that right now I have a number of serial ports. These are existing COM ports for other functions. Turn on your power supply and you'll see this cycle. You'll see two new ports pop up. In my case it's COM5 and COM6. Make a note of which one is your enhanced COM port. Your numbers will probably be different than mine. However, it is always the lower number that is the enhanced port. That will become important when we actually start working with different modes. Now come up here and double click on your enhanced COM port. It will bring up this pop-up. Go to the Port Settings tab and verify everything that's here. 9600, which we set in the menu, and verify your data bit status as well. If you need to, jot it down, because you're going to need this one more time when we actually get into some of those future data modes. Whatever program you're running is going to want to know what these numbers are. Hang in there. Hang in there. We're almost done. If you think this video might be valuable to someone else, please feel free to share. Sharing is fun with your friends and compatriots in the FT991A community. And please spread the word on social media as well. You just need to copy and paste the video link, which should be right up there someplace, into your social media accounts. Those sites will take care of the rest. The first thing we want to do is set our mode. And we want to be on data. 90% of the time, you're going to want to be in USB. If the software you're using requires that your data be on LSB, then you can select that. And you'll get a little indicator right up here under VFOA. You see it's DL. We'll go back to the modes. I'm going to put it on data upper sideband. Now we're going to go into our functions list. You want your mox and box to be off. I'm going to go back. Your notch, contour, DNR, DN off are all off. Your shift is at zero and your width is at 3000 hertz. Back again, and you want your narrow wide to be on wide and it should come up 3K. Noise blanker off, AGC on auto, uh, that's that 700 hertz that we set in the menu. And your attenuator off, I like leaving my IPO, that's your receive amplification. Uh, you have three selections starting with IPO, which is no amplification. Uh, amp 1 will give you, I think, 12 dB, and Amp 2 doubles that. I like to leave it on Amp 1, but you can play with that and come up with what you want. Swaps are real handy because these set what you have down here, and it is mode dependent. So whenever I'm in data mode, this is what I have down here. I can change my meter down here. I can change my RF power right here. I can just do that. And I don't have to go through the menu function to get, it, get to it. DT gain is good for setting your ALC. And that completes the radio and function settings. If you follow the processes that I've laid out in this video, then your rig is now ready to get on digital modes. The next video in the series will be setting up for WSJTX, which will then lead into a discussion of how to operate FT8, FT4, Whisper, and other modes in the WSJTX suite. 73 for now, and thanks for dropping in for a ham shack chat. As always, I am at your service. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out.